Well, this is it. We made it to the end. My STEM capstone journey didn't span far from the school environment, where I found my initial problem. This school year was the first where I began to take college classes at the University of Akron, our school's neighboring university. All the classes I enrolled in there are on campus, so I was not accounted for at STEM during these periods. This affected one thing in particular for me, and that was my attendance at morning meeting. This is a brief daily gathering that takes place just before first period where students are given quick information about upcoming school events, some specific announcements from staff, congratulatory messages for students' achievements, among other things. One of my classes off campus happened to fall in my first period slot and was about a 10 minute walk away from STEM. This meant that I was never able to attend morning meeting and thus missed out on all of this information on a daily basis. I had to resort to asking other students or teachers about things, or attempting to dig through the school website to find the Google Slides presented there. This led me to draft my first problem statement. STEM needs better ways of communication between the school, community, and families because I think access to clear communication is important. This statement gave me a broad field of things I could do to solve it but I wrote it with the intent of narrowing it later down the line when I decide exactly what I want to solve, other than merely improving communication. To achieve this, I created a root cause analysis map. On this, I took the broad problem I set out to alleviate and branched it out with other problems that contribute to it. I started with two different users, either being parents or students. Then I branched out further to narrow down to two choices of a problem. Between these two, I decided to go the route of helping CCP students because I learned that utilizing email is generally not a good idea because of how little students actually check theirs regularly. This is also the exact problem that I had that I shared at the beginning of the video, so I can use myself as a user reference, making it easier to know whether my solution actually solves the problem. With all of this in mind, I had to formulate a new problem statement to accommodate my new problem in question. Seniors and College Credit Plus students at STEM need a way to receive school information because I learned that our current communication methods fail to reach every student. I narrowed my user from STEM high school to specifically seniors and CCP students, as they are who are most affected by this problem. Also, I learned that STEM does utilize a number of methods to communicate information to students, but none of them actually reach everyone, so I made that clear in the new statement. Through my brainstorming, I came up with three feasible solutions for my problem. One of the solutions was to develop an Amazon Alexa skill that can name off the important things said during morning meeting for any student to ask for in any classroom with the device. I ended up ruling this one out though because I wanted this to be more accessible from anywhere at any time, and not everyone owns an Alexa device at home. My next idea was to create a Snapchat page to share school information on with its 24-hour story format, and that most high school students use Snapchat already. The problem I saw with this, though, was that students use Snapchat for their own personal communication, and would probably not care to see school-related content on their feed. My final idea was to create a website that condenses all of STEM's information sources in one page. This ended up being the idea I went with because it very closely matched what I set out to do in my problem statement. This doesn't create any new communication method, but it simply houses all of the current ones in a website format that can be accessed at any time on any device with a web browser. Once I had my solution decided on, I could add the second half of my final problem statement. If I create STEM Online, a web-based collection of the variety of information sources that the coaches at STEM use, then I can put all of the resources at one click and reach all of the students. My first iteration of STEM Online was all about what resources it would include. My first prototype was simply a Google document with functioning hyperlinks to the sources that I wanted to include. This emulated the basic idea that everything was in one place and only one mouse click away. I showed this to Derek Hall, an Akron Public Schools board member, for feedback. He would become my go-to source for feedback through the development of my product. For my next iteration, he suggested I come up with a plan for how the site will be run after I graduate. 
I decided that it would be best to transfer ownership of it to the student council because I want it to continue to be in the hands of potential users so they know what needs to be done to it. After getting this feedback, I started work on what would become my final product. I used Wix as my web development tool as it offered a blank template that nearly perfectly matched the mental image I had in mind for my site. I put in every source I had in the document into buttons on the web page, which was simple as copy pasting the link and adding an image to the template to create a customized functioning icon. After the icons were inserted, I placed the logo along with a little phrase on top of the page and just like that it was complete. I showed my final product to Mr. Hall as well as a few STEM seniors for suggestions to improve it in the future. I got a few really good ideas between adding a view tracker to gauge the traffic it receives, an open feedback option for students to suggest more resources to be added, and to consider how to distribute it to students next year. These are all things I would really like to have implemented by the end of the year for next year's students to use. This project has taught me quite a lot about how to properly solve a problem. I was dumbfounded with how late in the process that developing the actual solution was, but it only makes sense because in order for a solution to be effective, it has to solve a specific problem. It is super important to take special care to define a problem with clear parameters for what needs to be done in order for it to be solved. Each step is crucially important, and if any are ignored, the solution will fall flat on its face.